Okay guys, this is another benchmarking video for the NVIDIA Tesla P100 12 gigabyte version. The first benchmark will be with V-Ray and the second benchmark will be with Fermark. Um, I've already done a benchmarking video with Heaven, which you're more than welcome to have a look at. I have special drivers for this graphics card plus other Teslas which would allow you to use all functions of the graphics card. Obviously, from the factory, this graphics card does not come enabled to play games and so on and so forth. But with the special driver, it enables everything and allowing me to do whatever I want with the card. So, this benchmark is with V-Ray. And you're gonna see now what the situation is. <clears throat> my plan is to set up a machine with twin P100s and also a machine with twin M40s and see where I can go, what I can push. What I want to do is to have a setup where it beats a 3090 RTX and then work out the costs involved. In a minute, you're going to see the score for V-Ray for the NVIDIA Tesla P100 12 gigabyte version. Obviously, there's a 16 gig version as well. Now, to overclock this card is quite complicated. I've managed to find some hidden firmware updates for the card. I've also managed to back up the BIOS with, obviously, GPU-Z found a few tweaking applications but they don't really support the card um, so the score is there you go 488 VPaths and there you go it's an NVIDIA Tesla P100 12 gigabyte so that's that Just, yeah make of it what you will now we are testing with Fermark and um, unfortunately with Fermark it wouldn't it wouldn't do really high settings. My monitor is rubbish. And it wouldn't have it. So again, but we're getting 170 frames per second, which is fantastic. Temperature is under 60. Again, fantastic. But its card is passive cooled. As I said in the previous video, you you can't just plug it in and let it go. You have to cool it. I managed to cool it from a 10 pound cooler, which I got off eBay which works perfectly. I used a bit of thermal tape and it's sitting outside my machine with a PCI Express extender and it's working perfectly. Temperature under load stays under 60, which for one of these cards is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, and that's the end of the test. And as you can see, I try to push the limit, but it doesn't have it because my monitor will not have it. I don't have a monitor of that size. Right now we're really pushing it, and unfortunately, I the screen is too big. Maybe able to tell you the frame rate. Well, there you go. Uh, 128 frames per second with the full HD, which is fantastic. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this video wasn't that boring.